In this video, you're gonna learn how to use dual reverbs in your mix, one for early reflections and a separate one for late reflections or the reverb tail. Using reverb in this way is a little bit more complex, but it often sounds great. And it's a really good way to conceptualize and understand how reverb is used in a mixing context. Now, today's video is actually a guest video. So in a second, I'm gonna pass you over to Peter Dowsett. Peter is a London-based engineer who's worked with some huge artists like Pharrell, Snoop Dogg, and Black Eyed Peas. He also lectures at Abbey Road Studios, which is where I met him a few weeks ago, and I managed to persuade him to record a video for you guys. So I'll hand you over to Peter now, and he's gonna start by explaining reverb, explaining what early and late reflections are, so you can kind of conceptualize all of that properly, and then he'll go and actually show you this dual reverb trick. From the so in this video, we're going to be looking at how to conceptualize reverb and how to use it to get the results that you want much faster. So I've got an instrumental print here. I've got the lead vocal and I've also got a lead vocal parallel. So let's just listen to the chorus here. Great. So that's the chorus of the tune. Hopefully what you're hearing is that the instrumentals are pretty much there and the vocals sitting nicely on top, but it just doesn't have a lot of width, depth and character about it at the moment. So we're going to achieve that with some reverb usage. So one of the reasons that I think that people don't get a handle on reverb as quickly as they could is because of their basic understanding of what reverb actually is. Now, most people probably know that reverb is the sound propagation in an acoustic environment, i.e. the way that sound is bouncing off the boundaries and the walls and anything in a physical space. But what a lot of people don't realize is the kind of way that reverb has different sections within its life cycle. And conceptually, we can think of reverb as a very, very complicated series of delays. And so if you combine lots and lots and lots of delays in a special way, you get a reverb. And that's how people program um, algorithmic reverbs, i.e. computer algorithms that simulate an acoustic space rather than modeling one. So let's look at reverb in the form of a diagram. So here at point zero on the x-axis, we have the direct sound. So this is the point at which a sound has reached a listening position without bouncing off any sort of room boundary. So this is directly from the sound source to the listening position. And then what you have is a little bit of space where there's no reflections happening. And this is called the initial delay. So this is the difference in time between the direct sound arriving and the first reflection off a room boundary. And then from there, we have a series of what are called early reflections. Now, these reflections are the reflections that have arrived off one or two room boundaries. And typically at this stage, they're more spaced apart. So even though our ears won't hear these individual reflections, they'll hear it as a kind of room tone, it's easier for our ear to pick out the differences in these different reflections. But as this sound develops further, it's come off so many room boundaries and all kind of merged together to the point that it becomes more diffuse and harder for our ears to tell them apart. And this kind of, our ears perceive this as like a wash of tone. So when we picture reverb and try and use it, most people kind of associate reverb with this washy tail of a space. And what a lot of people don't realize is just quite how important these early reflections are. And so when I'm conceptualizing reverb, I like to think about, well, what sort of early reflection properties do I want and what sort of reverb tail properties do I want? And usually I'll create two or three different reverbs that I can blend to create the perfect acoustic property and this doesn't have to sound like a real space and certainly on most contemporary modern pop recordings the sort of sense of space that you get from a lead vocal is not like a real space but it's like a more larger than life better space than you could achieve in the real world and how they tend to record the vocals is they record them in very dry spaces with not a lot of reverb whatsoever and then they artificially wetten it after the fact 
So let's go into Pro Tools and let's look at how I would go about setting a reverb on a lead vocal. So we've already listened to the track, so let's just go ahead and I'm going to create two reverbs just straight off the back of this. So I'm just going to add one and I'm just going to call this ER for early reflections. And whilst what a lot of mixers will do is, especially if they're still using a console, is they'll create several reverbs. They'll create maybe a small reverb on an auxiliary. They'll create a medium sized reverb on an auxiliary and a large reverb. And they'll blend these to taste. And this is similar to what I'm going to do here. But I'm just going to call this early reflections because I want to drill home the point about how I'm going to set these and how I'm going to be focusing on the early reflections parameters on this one and I'm going to be focusing on the reverb tail on the other one okay so we've got those two there and we're going to start with the early reflections okay so I'm going to create a reverb that has a lot of focus on the early reflections and not a lot of dense reverb tail so typically the size of space will be much much smaller and also I'll be going for the sort of character that you kind of feel in the track but you don't necessarily hear okay and that's really important and I'm going to stress that a little bit later so I'm going to load up um, a kind of old school reverb here R reverb by waves and this is really good because you can actually see here the early reflections okay and you can see these lines these are early reflections and you can see the reverb tail which is this kind of orange looking box okay and we can set the early reflections and the tail separately on this reverb so it's really good for conceptualizing this so I'm going to turn up the early reflections and I'm going to turn the reverb tail completely off here so let's just listen to what early reflections on their own sound like Tomorrow's just another day away And there ain't no point in holding on to yesterday Let's rise, all we have is here and now Okay, so notice as I change the room type and the correlation here you see the patterns of the early reflections changing and notice even without any reverb tail this is changing our perception of the space so i'm going to cycle through these one more time and just have a listen to the different characters and and look at the titles of them all and trying to get an idea about how these spacings matter we gotta rise before we burn the whole world down rise before the ashes hit the ground tomorrow's just another day away and there ain't no point in holding on to yesterday let's rise all we have is here and now okay so hopefully what you were hearing there is when you had the biggest sort of spaces you had a lot of early reflections at a later point in time and as you got to smaller spaces you had them kind of condensed a little bit earlier and some of the mechanical reverbs like a plate or something like that was very prominent in the early um, times and not so prominent in later times so I'm going to start with a room here but I'm actually going to bring the reverb time down quite a bit to about 0.6 seconds which is you know more similar to what I would usually do in early reflections and I'm going to bring the size down and I'm going to kind of find a sweet spot just for these early reflections we gotta rise before we burn the whole world down rise before the ashes hit the ground Tomorrow's just another day away And there ain't no point in holding on to yesterday Let's ride Okay, so we have something that tells our ears that we're in some sort of acoustic environment. And if I put this back in the track, what you'll notice is that it kind of smooths the vocal over, makes it wider, and kind of gives our ears the clues that it's in some sort of space. But really, you're kind of feeling this. You're not explicitly hearing a lot of these early reflections. 
you're kind of feeling like it just sits a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is turn this reverb all the way down. I'm going to introduce it with the track playing and push it up until it's a little bit too much and then back it back off. We got So that feels a little bit better and early reflections if you're not used to them might sound slightly phasey especially if they're not set very well and that's something to get used to is the feel of that because quite often when it's in solo it might sound slightly phasey or slightly weird but if you set it right against a track you'll just kind of feel like it's in the space and it's rare for me here to just completely leave it without any reverb tail because obviously in a real room you're going to have some sort of dense wash of space as well but what i tend to do is have a bit of a disparity on this sort of smaller reverb between the early reflections and the tail so i'm going to kind of add a controlled amount of reverb back in with the track playing until it feels right we got Now, what I really hear when I take that away is not so much the tone or the space changing, but you kind of feel like it doesn't sit in the mix quite as well. It just sounds a little bit isolated and just like plonked on top of the track rather than being embedded in the track. And this is one of the things that kind of people get wrong a lot is that they have washy reverb tails, but they don't have enough early reflections. And that means that there's just something that doesn't kind of sit well with the rest of the track. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the opposite approach now and we're just going to hear a reverb just with the tail and kind of um, hone that in and then add the early reflections later. So I'm going to take away the early reflections, I'm going to solo this out and you're going to hear this kind of hawly sound just from the reverb tail. We gotta rise before we burn the whole world down Rise before the ashes hit the ground Tomorrow's just another day away And there ain't no point in holding on to yesterday Let's rise, all we have is here and now And let's go ahead and just at that level put that in the track Now that's more what we expect from a reverb when you first start using them, that kind of washy tail. And for me, I think it's important that you set your tail reverb with the early reflections playing. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to do it with the track playing and I'm going to mess with a few settings and then explain what I did. <laughs> 
Okay, so what you hopefully noticed there is that by the time I finished, the tail reverb was kind of subtle. And in this particular track, I didn't want it to sound like it was in a big space. I didn't want that kind of exciting ear candy sparkle on top. I just wanted the tail to kind of give a bit of excitement in a kind of under the radar way to the point where if I muted it, I would miss it, but I didn't really notice it so much. If this was a, an, like an Adele or Whitney Houston style ballad, then that would be the wrong approach. You would want to hear that reverb, or if it was a kind of shoegazy indie track, you might want to hear the reverb. But in this case, I felt like it was best to sit it back. So the ways that I achieved that were um, by bringing the timing down so that it wasn't washing for too long, and it kind of helped to tie in with the rhythmic pulse of the music. So 1.2 seconds felt pretty good. I brought the size down so that it was, again, um, denser in the initial part and not so much in the later part. And then I EQ'd it so that it wasn't so obvious in the extremes of our auditory range. And then I messed with the damping. So the damping is, is how different frequencies decay as the reverb goes on. So naturally, what you would find in a real space is that it's easier for the high frequencies to be dampened by the environment. But what I've done here is I got rid of some more top frequencies, you know, from the kind of 1 to 2K upwards. But I also got rid of some low frequencies, and this is just so that it doesn't muddy up the rest of the song. And probably one of the more important parts that I did is that I increased the pre-delay. So this is the amount of time between the direct sound and then the first reverb kind of reflection arriving and so by extending this much further it gives more time for the dry vocal and the early reflections on their own to kind of have their own space and then the tail comes afterwards and this is a great way to kind of make sure that your vocal sounds up front but it also sounds exciting and sparkly because you've got the tail coming in quite a bit after and you know even this 40 milliseconds you can go even longer than that before it sounds too much like a delay because the reverb tail is so washy it doesn't really sound like a delay even if you have a perceivable effect where you can hear the difference between the dry sound and the reverb tail finally i introduced a couple of uh, early reflections in there but again they were much lower than the tail so conceptually i have reverb for early reflections and a reverb for that washy tail so let's go ahead and listen to before and after we got So notice that you kind of feel the reverb rather than hear it. And I think that this is where a lot of people go wrong is they can't hear the reverb so they think it's wrong or they're focusing trying to do everything all in one reverb and it doesn't usually work very well like that. So before we finish and move on to something else, I just want to show you a couple of other things that I often do to reverbs. And I don't think there's any harm in adding an EQ after the reverb and particularly on these tails you might want to sculpt it some more so that it kind of fills the cracks of what's not in the rest of the track so i'm going to go ahead and i felt like it was a kind of muddy in this 300 hertz range so i'm going to solo the vocal get rid of a bit of that and try and make it so that the dry vocal has more of that low frequency to itself we gotta rise before we burn the whole world down Rise before the ashes hit the ground Tomorrow's just another day away And there ain't no point in holding on to yesterday Let's rise All we have is here and now And I also have this vocal parallel And sometimes what I do is, especially the early reflections I like to add that to the parallel because the parallel is really crushing everything together and it gives a solidity and sometimes it's good to have that in the early reflections too so i'm going to turn that down bring it up slowly until it feels like a good balance we gotta ride. 
great so before we move on i'm going to quickly show you one final thing and that's that this early reflections reverb is often kind of replaced in pop music by a simple delay because early reflections have a lot of reflections even though they're spaced a little bit apart there's lots of them so what a lot of pop producers like to do when they want to keep the vocal really forward but give a kind of a tricked sense of space we kind of add a small delay so let's just go ahead and add a delay here and instead i'm going to keep this early reflections muted and i'm just going to add something very very simple and what i want to do here is i want to keep the feedback low and i want to kind of keep the timing to be quite quick so let's mute the tail for the moment and we're going to solo this and i want this to kind of come across as a little bit slappy i'm not looking to time something longer and have very obvious repeats i'm looking for something that just kind of snaps very quickly okay we gotta rise before we burn the whole world down rise before the ashes hit the ground tomorrow's just another day away and there ain't no point in holding on to yesterday let's rise all we have is here and now so i started there by looking at the timing of it to be synced in with the track and now i'm just going to kind of fine tune that a little bit more we gotta rise before we burn the whole world down rise before the ashes hit the ground tomorrow's just another day away and there ain't no point in holding on to yesterday let's rise all we have is here and now notice that that's a little bit cleaner a little bit less phasey and more obvious than the other delay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just bring this down um the send level down just so that i can kind of make it sit better and then i'm going to level it in with the track we gotta rise before we burn the whole world down rise before the ashes hit the ground and now let's compare that to the early reflections we gotta rise before we burn the whole world down rise before the ashes hit the ground so it gives some of that sense of space but without being quite so diffuse as the early reflections so let's go ahead and level this with the track Okay, so the delayed version sounds a little bit clearer, uh, less washy, but I kind of hear a couple of frequencies in the upper mids that are bothering me, and sometimes it's useful to pull those out just so that the reverb um, or the fake delay to give a sense of reverb is kind of pushed back and not so audible. We got 
So around this sort of frequency range between kind of like 1K and 5K is where our, you know, ears are most sensitive because that's where the intelligibility of human speech is. So by pulling these frequencies out a little bit out of the delay here, it's kind of de-emphasizing that and making the dry sound more important. So I hope you enjoyed that and you can start to apply that to some of your own mixes. And if you want to know more, I've actually created a cheat sheet at my site, audioproductiontips.com. And this will give you five steps to creating major label vocals. So these are five mixing tips that will help you get better vocal sounds immediately.